तमेव विद्या द्रविण तमेव तमेव सर्व मम देवदेव दाऊ मई मदर दाऊ मई फादर दाऊ आट मई फ्रेंड दाऊ आट मई कंपेनियन दाऊ मई वेल्थ Thou my everything, Thou art all in all, O Lord of Lords. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Peace, peace, peace. So we are back to our <coughs> Narada Bhakti Sutra reading. Narada's way of divine love by Swami Prabhuvananda. We will be studying today verse number fifty-nine, and we have already <coughs> gone through the beautiful verses, which give us the idea that bhakti, the supreme bhakti, cannot be expressed. It is like a person <coughs> who is dumb. If he wants to express his joy of eating some honey, he cannot express. It is like that. Your speech stops there. And but is it really so? No one can feel that. Well, yes, it can only be expressed in special people, in special spiritual personalities. That was. And that is because it is beyond all gunas, because it is beyond all worldly desires, and it is such a joy that it always gets in lips and mouths. It moves more and more and more, and it is unbroken joy, unbroken love. It is very fine. It can be only experienced. Who has experienced? He has experienced, or she has experienced. It cannot be expressed in words. So it is anubhava rupam. It is of the nature of anubhava, self experience. It cannot be said what it is. <laughs> it cannot be expressed in any. How many volumes of books we can write? But still, it remains the same, unexplained, because it is the subject of experience. And what happens to the person who sees this? We have read that that only seeing that that propio attaining that love, supreme love, supreme joy, tadiva bolu kajati. He sees that love everywhere, wherever he beholds. He saw. He sees the joy, the blissful Lord everywhere. Tadevo, Srinoti. In every sound, he hears the voice of his master, divine, and the chirping of the bird, the flow of the wind, the human voice experience, slang language to the holy words. Everywhere, he feels the message of his beloved Lord, and when he speaks. He cannot speak of anything else but God, 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 His beloved. So that tadivo bhasayati. And when he is alone, he cannot think of anything. He only thinks of his beloved Lord. So that is the intoxicating mood comes. That he does. It, it is like total transformation. He does not see anything but God. He does not listen anything but God. He cannot. Talk anything but God, he cannot brood over anything but God. That means he is saturated with God. Wow, what a state! And that is a very veritable example is found in the life of Sri Chaitanya, or in the life of Sri Ram or Krishna in the modern age. That how that can be possible. And but for us, this we are ordinary people. What about our bhakti, our devotion? 
Some people love God. We also love God. But we are of categories. There are, these are divided into three. This is called the secondary bhakti. This is the primary main spirit bhakti. You know? Genuine, spiritual, absolute love, love, love has been absorbed in love. That, that secondary bhakti is of three types according to what quality you carry on. Are you sattika or rajasika or tamasika? Your devotion will be sattika devotion, rajasika devotion, tamasika devotion. And also, artha adi vedat. You are falling into difficulties, world-weary situation, show no one to help you, you go and cry for God. That is the devotion we call. Now you want to know, is there God at all? A superficial, not that deep. That is the jiggasu. And orthartic being troubled in financial difficulties or in some problem of day-to-day -day living, we go to God. That's also devotion. So according to these three conditions, either sattva, raja sattamas, or according to your artha, jiggasu, artharti, three state, this devotion may be three types for us, gauni, which is secondary, which will lead to the primary. Is there any relationship like that after means tamashik and arthati means rajashik? Is there between? They have not done like that, but you can manage and you have to think. Subjectively, you can think. If you are becoming sattiko, <coughs> then you will not be going to God for material gain. Yeah, why to bother him? I'll ask him for God, uh, higher things. Why to go to a king for asking for a penny? Hmm? So that desire will come. So purified intelligence will stop Swami Vivekananda in utter distress, utter financial condition, getting all the opportunities. Whatever he will ask, he will get it from the Divine Mother. Ramakrishna told, but he could not. Seeing her, she said, oh my God, what am I asking for a penny? She can see them, give her infinite joy, infinite bliss. And I am asking, give me a little food and shelter. It's too insignificant. So that's a sattiko, you can say that. But rajasiko, tamasiko, it may be you can compare. But to understand that our sattiko nature gives a higher joy, rajasiko nature. You see, Thakur has, in the gospel, in mantra, she has said, sattiko, sattiko bhakti will be doing meditation, prayer in silence. Least people see him meditating. Least the ego comes. Oh, someone says, oh, he is meditating. Huh? Ha, ha, how much he doing? I don't do that. So, and hearing that, your ego will pop up. Ha, I do more than he. People are appreciating. No, they will hide. Ramakrishna said, in India there was mosquito, so mosquito curtain. And mosquito curtain is used only when people sleep. But he is a lover of God. He is meditating in the bed. Least others know. Others will say, oh, oh, this gentleman, this lazy guy, still sleeping late, late hours of the morning. But actually he is doing silently japa there. So, when you love God, you do it silently, that is sattika. Raj, be, rajasika. Eh? Will it not be counted as hypocrisy? Why? Because you are showing that you are going no, to... No, 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 no. Hiding for the, for the ignorant people, least they will praise you. That's a purpose is the question. Why hypocrisy? Hypocrisy does mean, you know, that does not happen. As the love grows, love becomes private. Huh? It is not human love. Look at that. Huh? Human love is the husband and wife, they have their fun, fun. Do they do in public? 
is hiding. Hiding is a private. It's so pure, so intimate. So your love for God is your intimate. Why other people will see that? You should not make a show of your love. That means it is not show. It is love, it is show. Rajagun comes there. Rajagun will say, I am doing Japa, meditation. There is a big breed here. There is sitting like that. And select people will say, oh my God, he's meditating. How wonderful. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> I have seen such people <laughs> while I was in Belud Mott. <laughs> I used to see that people sit in a, there is a big lotus in the center of the big temple, no? Uh, in, uh, one time I, I, we were uh, given duty to bust the temple because anyhow, that, uh, that's a big story. So uh, that people sometimes used to come, they would sit in the big lotus in the center. So as soon as you get up and you see someone, and I have seen many devotees coming, visiting, they said, hey, see, yeah, and the child is also, oh, ma, see, he's meditating. And he will be, <laughs> and then again, <laughs> look at, look at, <laughs> and we drink Japa. <laughs> the rosary, showing the rosary. That is the Rajasika. Eh? And Sattika people will do meditation. There is a <clears throat> piano, big piano, <clears throat> on the right side, left side. <clears throat> they will sit in such a way, their back can be, anyway, you are. That's a dark area, hiding. They're doing more meditation, two, three hours, maybe they're sitting over there. But this person will sit for 10, 15 minutes. Someone will come to click, click, photo. They say, oh, wow, 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 wow. So this is Rajasika. Rajasika means, yes, I love, but there is show, there is pride that I do. do. So this is called Rajasika. Tamasa. Tamasa is a lower type to high, who is it like the, uh, in India, people go to, uh, do anything, they go to Makali to do puja, no? The decoits, the burglars, they go and they worship. And hi, who is then worshipping uh, Raja Sikoya, offering goat and this and animal sacrifice and blood and that and that. Then say, okay, I'm going to uh, have a burglary now. Oh, ma, give me a good burglary. <laughs> So they, uh, a tamasik is a, a much more uh, gross way of sewing. As you find, refine yourself, you don't sew things. You look at that. You, if you are a very learned person, you don't want to show your uh, learning in front of everyone. I know so much. If you are a little learned person, you'll be humbled. Uh, vidya dadati binayam. When you are learned, it is said when the tree becomes full of fruits. It does not stand like that. With a load of the fruit, it droops down. So Biddha is such a thing, knowledge, it makes you humble. You don't sow your pomp and pride. But those who are for the first time, I remember when I was a student of intermediate college, so I learned a little bit of chemistry and physics sometime. Eh? So, and I'm talking to my friend, race in the whatever, uh, calcium, carbonate, this, that, what, part, food, part, long, and the others are seeing, and I'm feeling proud. <laughs> See, <laughs> I'm something, I'm talking to guy. Eh? And now I smile at that. <laughs> See, those who are learned people, they never talk, they, they know the subject at all. Mm. As big is the person, so humble are they. But so that is Raja, so Tamas, so all this. So these are the attitude, even in every field of life that manifests, in spirituality also. When you are deeply spiritual, you do silently, because it is your intimate love for God. There should not be nobody there to praise. In your intimate relationship, in worldly relationship, they don't want, they want a third party to stand there. So how can you do that with your God, who is the most intimate, in the most dear in your life, no? So that is the thing. So that does not mean that they will not go to temple and do meditation and prayer. They will, but do, but do in such a way, least amount of expression to the outside people. <laughs> Anyhow, <clears throat> so these are the three types. And they say that sattiko is better than rajasa. Rajasa 
is better than tamas. Huh? So like that, it is better that one is higher than the other. Now, 58 bars, <coughs> today is our 58th bars. 58 bars is a very beautiful bars that, you see, they, they, we can think about how it is easy. It is easy, bhakti is easier than jnana, karma, yoga. Bhakti anyasmat saulabhyam bhaktau. Huh? Onno, onno means others. What are the others? The four yogas we know. Jnana yoga, karma yoga, raja yoga, and bhakti yoga. Among the four, bhakti is saulabhyam, sulab. Sulab means sahaj. You can get it, grab it. Huh? You want to get some pound of rice? You go any grocery, you can get it quickly. Huh? But if you want some very uh, fine some item, you will have to search, no, this shop does not, you don't get it here, you will go to that place. Uh, and th that place is not good, you can get it in some other place. Mm. Uh, uh, install, uninstall something. Remind me later. Hmm. Huh? I done, but it is gone. <coughs> I said, remind me later, but it is gone to another thing. Anyhow, <coughs> huh? so it is sulab. Sulab means easy, accessible. It is accessible. Uh, it is uh, mukti is available easily. Dhano is very difficult. But bhakti is easy. Why? Because we have our human emotions. We can only direct that towards God. Uh, but jnana, Brahman is alone truth, all else is false. I may say something. But uh, as we are talking just, uh, where is consciousness? Where to find that consciousness? No. It's very difficult. But bhakti, I love God. Huh? I love my rasgulla. I love my ice cream. Huh? Oh, I love God. Because love is known subject to us. I love my dress. I love my clothing. I love these organized um, things to be in front of me. So I love so many things. So I can say, I love God. So love is known. But what to put? Which, what thing you love? We love material thing. Now you say, I love God. So we have that tool within ourselves. You have your money in your pocket. Suppose you have some thousand dollar in your pocket. You utilize that thousand dollar for purchasing this thing, that thing, that thing. Or you want to purchase a very precious thing that is God with that thousand dollar. So bhakti you have already. No one in the world is lacking bhakti. Even the brutal person, most brute, Swamiji said, most brutal. But that brute also loves his baby. When the child, eh, he has his own baby, he has his love there. He loves his wife. Some, there is even in those people, there are. So love is inherent in everyone. You are not to purchase where, somewhere. You are not to like, I have no knowledge. We say, I have no knowledge. But you have love, you need not have to have somewhere else. You have it. You already have it. But only redirect it. When you direct towards God, it's called bhakti. That's why it says, it is sulab. Sulab means, it is availability, easy availability. And also, it's greatness. This chapter of few verses, three verses, talks about the uh, easy accessibility to bhakti and also its glory or greatness. So 58 says, Anyasmat saulabhyam bhaktau. Lab is saulabha. Saulabha means it is the path of devotion is the easiest way to attain God. That is the translation has been done here that way. Saulabham. Bhakto. 
Lekhi, what has been done here? 58. Uh, this devotion is more easily attained and recognized than Parabhakti. Hmm? It is easily recognizable, Saurabdham, and it is Annasmat Saulabham, Saulabhyam Bhakto. This devotion is more easily attained and recognized than Parabhakti. Para, if you talk about Parabhakti, of course, this bhakti is easy, the lower step of bhakti, we have that. Parabhakti is rare. Or even some may explain, we have, we know, karma, jnana, huh? dhyana, these are maybe difficulties. But bhakti is easier in that way because it is in our hand. Only we have to give a little turning point. The car is going in one direction. You only give a twist to your uh, wheel uh, and then it um, by turning the, what do you call it? Uh, wheel. Uh, wheel to the right side a little bit and it goes. Uh, so the car, car is moving in speed. Only you give a twist and turn. So that's why it is sulap. <clears throat> so let me read the explanation given. It is the 58th verse. It says, though religious experiences of devotion cannot easily be scrutinized or described, it is easily realizable through the practices mentioned above and recognizable when it is engaged, engendered. There is no one who has not had experience of love towards something or somebody at some point of time or other. There is no one in the world who can say, I do not know what is called love. Huh? I love so many things. I know what is love. I also know what someone loves me. Huh? So this is in, within our parameter of our knowledge. So he says, here, Swami, the other book, huh? Swami Tagi Shananda says, there is none who has not had experience of love towards something or somebody at some time or other. When this natural love of the world is directed towards God, after strengthening and purifying it, it is called bhakti. Huh? After directing towards God, and purifying it. Purifying means loving God for no purpose. Normal love, our, our love, because we are in the first three categories. So we need money, we go to God. We are in trouble, we go to God. We sometimes question, is God there? Where is that? Then we also think of God. But not there. You go another step, higher step. It should, stay. it should be purified love. Love minus bhashana. Love minus kamana, desire. No kamana. I love God because I love him. Like Swami Vivekananda used to come to Ramakrishna and Ramakrishna wanted to test why Naren comes to me. If, I, if he comes only because I praise him, then, okay, he is not genuine. So he started ignoring him. Not one day, two days, one month. Whenever Noreen comes to the door, Ramakrishna turns his face and talks to other, and don't looks at him. My God, could you believe? The other day he was running for Noreen, Noreen, Noreen. Hey, people go, Noreen has come. And now you, you enter there, one day ignoring, and the second day ignoring, same way. Third day continues as if his presence is not there. But he didn't stop coming. After a month, Sri Ramakrishna asked, Hey, don't you see that I don't look at you when you come? Why do you come to me? Well, I, do I come for any other thing? I love you, that's why I come. See, that is the Bhalavasa. It's called unconditional love. So before reaching that, that is the purified love. 
not mixed with any other agenda, expectation. But that is the pure state, that is the way you have to reach that state. But this is Gauri Bhakti, we are living in that, and that Bhakti will lead to that. <coughs> so it is not very difficult to achieve or recognize it when it comes, as any person is quite familiar with the emotions of love itself in some other form or other. <coughs> so this is the verse number 58. Now we, leave, we read the verse number 59. And also I can discuss a little bit that karma, it is much easier than karma. Because whenever we do karma, what happens? Our personality comes in between. Friction comes, my way, your way. You have to do this way. Now I will do my way. Huh? Why to do? And every karma, yeah, even done with good purpose, ends in friction, in conflict, in fight. I won't come here if this thing goes on this way. That means this way you don't like, that way you like, your way, not this way. So karma to be niskama, without any desire, without any reaction, work for work shake is so difficult. People try that whole life, even uh, karma yoga gita's idea, very difficult to uh, practice. Because you have to imbibe, karma is okay, but karma without desire is a difficulty. So it is much easier bhakti you have. You see, I love you because God in you. I see my Ramakrishna is in your heart. I love you. So you love, love the same person, but only with a changed idea, mentally you think, Ramakrishna is there. Ramakrishna gave the example, that lady to serve the nephew, and Ramakrishna said, why you have to, why it is difficult, you will just feed your nephew, that you are feeding Krishna, you are bathing, him think that you are bathing Krishna. So you put Krishna there. Your love remains the same. Rather it becomes intensified and transformation is coming automatically. So compared to that, I am doing work. My anger will go away. My way of doing, if it is that way, I don't like to do that. Those to overcome is very difficult. You do and you see the reaction. Every day we fail. So karma is difficult to turn into karma yoga. Dhyano, we all know. We sit for meditation and think of God. Now tell me how many seconds we think of God. How many things really we meditate on God. How many times we think of other things of the world. As soon as we sit for meditation, what comes? I'm trying to think of Ramakrishna or Rama or Krishna or Christ and immediately my thought goes to what? Goes to some vaccine issue. Bas, my mind is gone. It spends about 10, 15, 20 minutes, vaccine, vaccine, who has taken, who has not taken, what is to be done, what is done. Or suppose you have some conflict with somebody, you go into fight, you start talking to him. Hey, you said this, I should have thought this, I, I should so you go on for some time, and then you say, oh, I was meditating on Ramakrishna. So it is how difficult, huh? so meditation is not easy. So it is because my mind is running, I have to force him to bring back. But bhakti, it is going this way. You go the same way, only put Ramakrishna. So that's why bhakti is sulab, easy to attain. And only, so it is much easier than karma yoga, Dhyana yoga or Jnana yoga. Jnana yoga has how much you think I'm not the body, not the mind. Hmm. My, my, my back pain starts. I'm not the body, not the mind. But back pain says, hey, I'm here. <laughs> you want to say, I'm not the body, you are the body. No? And even in utmost pain, when its pain starts, your Atman, Brahman all goes away. You become body identified. So, not it is impossible. Path is correct. But comparing these difficulties, 
bhakti is sulava easily available and its glory is that it is sahaj sahaj means easy easy and easily it can be cultivated <coughs> now <coughs> 59 verse there is also another beautiful verse it says pramano antara sa anapekshatvat swayam pramanatvat pramano antara sa apekshatvat Bhakti does not need another proof. Suppose here is a table. What is the proof of the table? Because I see it. But I cannot see if this deep dark room, this table is there, I won't see. So you need, to prove this, you need some other proof. But bhakti, you don't need it because you have it. You love, from morning onward you see you love something or other. You don't get your, uh, suppose I write with a pen, if I don't get that pen, I love that pen so much, even it is to be all ending, its ink is gone. But if it's hiding somewhere and it miss, I become disturbed. Hey, where is my pen gone? Are, it is worthless pen. But my love for pen is already there. So that's why it is said, Pramana, you don't need any other proof. Bhakti, in the path of bhakti, those people who wander around in the path of bhakti, there, bhakti is there, you don't, don't need another proof. Why? Because you have feeling that you have love for so many things. So only love for God is the question. Put God, put God, put God. So bhakti is said, see God. Huh? Everywhere see God, try to see God. That's why you don't need any other proof whether bhakti is there. Have I gain? That is to be, you need proof. Because I forget to analyze all the time. But here, bhakti? No, you are not to do, you are born with that bhakti. You are having your identity with the body. I love my body. No one can deny that. Huh? That's why no one wants to die. Death is a big question. But the why that is a big question? Because I love my body. I don't want to get this body out of me. So that's why I fear. So it does not need any other proof. There is no other object to remove this confusion. So 59 verse then says that love is its own proof. Eh? Bhakti is own proof. You don't need another something to bring, to enlighten. This is called bhakti. Bhakti is its own. Because if you love God, you feel the joy spontaneously. Suppose we are doing some bhajan, singing together. And when the bhajan is over, you feel the joy. That means, where was joy? You cannot say, I do not know what joy is. You know joy because you sang together or you prayed together or you did something. You instantly feel that you are experiencing that joy. So bhakti or love is spontaneous with you. So you don't need any other. It's, uh, love is its own proof and does not require any other. Hmm? <coughs> In this book, Swami Prabhupada has not said much about it. <coughs> so we can read Swami Tagishananda Maharaj. He says, this 59 verse, that means his love is its own proof and does not require any other, gives another reason why bhakti is easily recognizable. Unlike any other new object, the reality of which cannot easily be recognized, love does not require some other proof to recognize it. For it is self-evident, because it is spontaneous. You have, you feel it. You get some food, delicious food. Huh? You immediately touch your tongue and you feel joy. You love it. I love this food. Huh? Second day, if you get that food, you will be happy. So, you see, 
you, you need not have to prove another reason. You don't bring a big argument or logic to prove that, ha, ah, it is so. You see that food, you feel the joy. That means love is spontaneous. It is coming because it is within you. Whatever you do, experience, but even though you have experience, but love is there already, when it connects it with a special object, there is your, you can feel that I am connected there. Even our hatred is also love. Why? I don't like it. Why do you say I don't like it? Because your love is there, not to the degree of your expectation. You expect this much but it is going below. It is love. It is like the science. In darkness, is there light or not? Is there light wave? In the darkness also light wave. Now also light wave. In the dazzling light there is light wave. But our eyes are designed to catch a range of wavelength where I can see. If it goes down, I can't see. If it goes up, I cannot see. So, bhakti is that within that range, we can feel that. If it goes beyond, then you lose yourself, parabhakti. If you down deep, you are a, a hard-hearted person. Yeah. So, but still, bhakti is there, as I give the example. So, unlike any other new object, the reality of which cannot easily be recognized, Love does not require some other proof to recognize it, for it is self-evident. It does not require a second person to prove to one whether one is happy or miserable. Huh? You are happy or miserable, you know. You don't know, want somebody to tell you, hey, you are happy or miserable. Your happiness or unhappiness, your joy or your expression of... Uh, uh, Un, non 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 joyable my mental mood in don't thought but it does not need to tell you you know yourself that's why it is spontaneous with you nor is it necessary to apply any inference to know it you need not to infer oh probably there is a uh, why it is inference inference is like that if we see that there is a smoke we infer there is a fire but for love, we don't need any such inference. <laughs> love, you can understand. Your, your love, your hatred, you understand yourself. But as I said, love is also love. Hatred is also love. If we analyze it, less love is called hate. disliking. Liking, you liking means your love is up to your range. If it goes down, then I dislike. It goes my further down, I hate it. But it is all love. And lower degree and higher degree. Any amount of argument cannot convince one against one's own experience. Direct experience is the primary and infallible means of all valid knowledge. So devotion which we have, it is direct experience. I feel it. I feel the joy. Huh? It is no, you need not have to tell me whether I have internally really felt joy or not. Huh? The gross example, someone, we are eating 10, ten people maybe in the, in the dining table. One has a very bad thing has happened and he comes to eat with us. Huh? He's eating, but you look at him and he himself knows he's not releasing this discussion, releasing this food. His mind is engaged somewhere. No third party needs to tell you. You know yourself that you are unhappy there. But when you are happy, you know that you are happy first. Then others will look at your face, may infer something, or wrong inference may also be. You may be quiet because you have some good meditation. You may be uh, feeling something which is more joyful, so you are not paying attention to what is going on. Others' inference may be wrong. 
But you know yourself, you are happy or unhappy. You have bhakti or not, you know. So you don't need third party to give a stamp on your experience. The doubt, however, may rise as to how a bhakta can possess perfect peace when every moment he has to be anxious about the welfare of the world, if not of himself. For we find all great devotees of the Lord eager to save the world from sin and misery. The answer for this doubt is now given in the next verse. <coughs> Let me see. I will consult another book because it is not... Uh, to the question. So let me see what he has here, this book also. Uh, it says that you need to know something unknown, you need some proof. But for bhakti, it is not necessary. Bhakti is an object of your own experience. And when you experience, no question what others say have any value. You have your good dream, you have seen a dream, eh? and you are happy with that. Others may say, oh, it is hush -push thought of your mind. But your joy you felt, no one can disprove that. You are the person, you know what you have experienced. So bhakti is a subject of self-experience, and its realization or experience is the greatest proof. And every bhakta devotee experiences that in the core of their heart. The bhakta, they starts with bhakti. Huh? Bhakta starts with bhakti. A devotee starts with, in the path of bhakti, they start with bhakti. What is bhakti? Like Prahlad. Prahlad is story in the Bhagavat. Huh? He is talking, uh, the Prahlad is talking to his demonic brothers. See, you need not have to make any effort to love God, oh my friends, because he is the Atman of every heart. So, so love him. Now, the next verse is, what is the next verse? Next verse is, Shanti Rupo Paramarupatsha. This bhakti is Shanti Rup. Its form is peace. As much as you love God, so much peace, more peace, more tranquility will come. It's, it is Shanti Rupa and Paruma Ananda. Also it is bliss, joy, more joy, more joy. Ramakrishna said, if one could cry for God, eh, then they can understand what joy is there in, uh, in this bhakti, no? Ramakrishna said, if anyone has cried one day, God will have to come in his life, no? And whenever God comes in, in, in one's life, that person is full of peace, full of joy, more joy, more joy, more joy. That's why they don't care. And the bhakta's life, if we read, their financial condition is bad, their family is not getting food, good food. They don't care about anything. But they are full of peace inside. Outwardly, people may say, oh, oh they are going uh, to so much hardship. And it is not hardship for a devotee. Devotee sees their inner heart is filled with joy, filled with peace. So it is said, Shanti Rupat. This bhakti, his nature is, his form is peace. And Parama Anandaru, it is of the Ananda, of the supreme grade, because these two are the essential nature of God. What is God if someone wants to define? 
Sometimes we can define in this way. What is God? God is all peace. What is God? God is all joy. Huh? There is no despair. There is no suffering in God. Huh? But when you are away from God, then suffering starts. Rabindranath Tagore sang, Toma hote jabe hoye bimur Aponar pane chai Tomaro yasi me mano prano loye Jato dure amidhai Kothao ki dukkha Kothao bichchedo Kothao mrittu kothao bichchedo nai there is no bitches, separation. There is no death as I move in your infinite expanse of love, no? And when I turn from you, oh Lord, my eyes from you, and look at this petty me, and there is all. Dukkha se hai, ane dukkhe rorup, mrittu hai he, mrittu rokup, toma hote jabe, hoye bimuk. Uh, when I turn my face from you, then life is all, all miserable. Death is tremendous suffering. But when I go in you, it is all peace, all joy. No? So this is the idea, uh, Shanti Rupa. So <coughs> here, <coughs> Bhakti, two definitions of Bhakti is given here. It is its essential nature. Is peace and essential nature is supreme joy. Uh, and these two are to be experienced in your own heart. Bhakti means you are going towards God, our godly character is developing you. Are you becoming peaceful? Shanti. And are you becoming more joyful inside? Things will happen outside, disturbing. But you are moving towards God in bhakti means are you becoming inwardly peaceful and joyful? And you feel that you are peaceful or joyful. No third party needs to tell you. Third party will tell you they may be wrong or right, but your own personal experience, you know more. So this is the 50, 60th verse. Shanti rupat, paramananda rupat cha. Shanti and ananda. We, when we experience in our heart, we don't need any external proof from outside to experience that. Whatever we, whatever, whatever effort we do to get peace and joy, we do all activities. All activities are directed. Why you do? To get peace. Why you marry? For peace and shanti, peace and ki paramananda joy. Why do you go for a job? I'll get money. Shanti, I'll get more peace and more money. Huh? Why, why, why are you going to study school for getting this ultimately? I'll be peaceful, I'll be happy. Why are you becoming a monk? The same question, shanti. And Paramanand. When you come to Mount Temple, why do you come to temple? Why do you run after the sadhus? This sadhu, that sadhu, that sadhu, that sadhu. Why? Because you want to be in peace. Because you want to have joy. And Paramananda. That's joy and peace. We're searching for that. So for that, that is the name equal God's name. God is equal to, if someone gives two definition of God. God is equal to G-O-D is equal to what? Peace, one point, and second point is joy. Eh? Paravananda, not ordinary joy. We know ordinary joy. Ordinary, we start with that. We would think that if I grab this, then I'll be happy. So people still. But that is not joy. They understand, oh, it is only temporary. I grabbed it with so much trouble, but I was caught and penalized, and I had to go to jail and this and that. And shoplifting, people sometimes do. But that for joy and peace. So two languages is very important. We are all doing for that. But when it is gone for 
through the sense objects, that is only temporary, peace, temporary ananda, but not stable, santi and ananda. But in, in this bhakti practice, if we go more and more, then only ananda, only peace, eh? peace and joy and joy and peace, nothing else. That's why right. in parava, paravakti, in supreme love, one becomes attains fulfillment. And I will read it here for Swami Prabhupada has said on page 132, verse number 60. Its nature is peace and supreme bliss. This is the definition of bhakti. It's a new definition, which we all know. So you test yourself every day. Are you getting more peace? Getting more bliss? Then you are becoming a bhakta. You are becoming more restless and more unhappy. <laughs> then you are neither bhakta, neither jnani, neither bhogi, neither jogi, nothing. It is all wasted. And spiritual life, you are progressing, you will have deeper peace, deeper santi, eh? peace and joy. Beautiful description. We can every day make a list and try to be in peace. Things will happen outside. What does to me? God is with me and it is my eternal friend. I am tuned to that. There is peace, there is joy. Turning our attention. So this is a great, great lesson if we practice this bhakti practice. Bhakti practice means normally think going to temple and offering incense and dhup and of course those are means. But more subjective test is that are you becoming a bhakta? Are you becoming peaceful? Are you becoming joyful? More and more and more things will happen outside. It will not touch you because you are tuned to the inner life. Inner life. And what is inner life? Peace and joy. Peace and joy. A new definition we can remember in our spiritual life. Test. You need 10 point, 20 point, nothing point is necessary. Every day think how many moments you are peaceful in all situations. How many moments you are feeling joy eh? and undisturbed joy. Not sensory joy. Since the joy is joy, but we don't. That is not our goal. We are not studying this book for that purpose. But we are going to that joy, permanent joy, eternal joy. So. No, indifference is a negative thing. Indifference will be there for the world. For what? Why are you indifferent? You must have to have love for something. What is the use of indifferent? I am indifferent to that. Means. I love something else. You cannot be only indifferent. You cannot turn your house from that way and you don't see. You see this side. You don't see that, you see this side. We will have to do that. So, therefore, we should be watching. Are you becoming peaceful? Are you becoming joyful? Every day. How long I was in peace? How long I was disturbed? So, the 68th verse says, the nature is peace and supreme bliss. And Swami Prabhupada says, its nature is peace and supreme bliss. Love is felt and experienced in one's own heart. That itself is its own validity. The nature of this divine love, which is peace and supreme bliss, is only experienced when a man has reached his union with God. One may find peace and joy in human love but they are not, not lasting love. That is the point. Joy is there everywhere. Huh? In human relationship, there is love. A friend loves a friend, there is joy. You eat something, there is joy. You see something beautiful, there is joy. But these are not we are talking about because it has not lasting joy. The peace and joy that you experience through devotion to God is lasting and continuous. And it grows in intensity. So this is the verse number 60. So we'll see the, what is 60 here. Huh? Question is there. Good that you have some question. OK, let me see. No, no, no. If, if any, anything I am to say here. Mm. OK, so we'll, we'll now go for the question. But what we read, the three verses, please remember, what we read, three verses we read today. First of all, we read, 
verse number 58, where it says, Anasmat Sulabham Bhakto. That means, and among other yogas, practices, eh, bhakti is very shulava, easy and spontaneous. We have that experience. And you don't, second verse says 59, you don't need another proof, another person to certify me. Are you feeling God's love? No third party needs to tell you. It is you are subjectively can understand your love. And if he's, are you in love for God? What is the sign? You will feel more peace, more joy, more tranquility. Whatever happens outside, internally you will be peaceful. Thank you all. Om Shanti 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 Hi Hari Hi Om Tat Sat Sri Ram Krishna Panamastu. Now we have some questions. Okay. Three questions. <clears throat> what to do when Advaitins say that personal God is a is a mind superimposition on Brahman and spiritual experience is projection of the desire. You need not have to take this stand. There is a question from a Gyani standpoint. Bhakta and Gyani only have to make a distinction. Where is Gyani? Gyani says there is only one absolute truth. You, you are in Maya and you think you are body, you are not body, you are not mind, but you are the Supreme Self. So there is no personal God. Neither you are there, neither your personal God. But we as bhaktas, when we, when we study the book, I am here. My Lord is there. But that Lord is infinite. You cannot live with God. So that is the stand of a gani. And that God you cannot limit in a bit defined form, though he takes the divine form. But in reality, he is infinite. My Krishna is everywhere. Yeah, in the stars, in the galaxies, in the earth, in the, in the uh, space, no? Where is not? God is Krishna. Yaha, yaha, netra pare. Wherever I behold, I see God, God, God. Uh, just we read the... Today we started with that. When a parabhakti comes, he sees the God everywhere. So do you, that, that when he sees that God, is it personal or impersonal? Only he can tell us. But when they get so much absorbed, like Maha, Mahaprabhu, when he goes to, he goes to, all outer consciousness goes away. So his body identity goes away. He's enjoying only love of God, no? So, but Bhakto does not want to merge like Gani. That's why they want to keep a separation. Ramakrishna used to say, Oh, mother, I don't want to be sugar, but I want to test the sugar. So I remain and I enjoy. So Bhakta's position is that, but it is not contradictory. But we start our personalized worship, and some people wor want to worship him everywhere. Vedanta says, it is your mind. What you are saying, it is mine. But whose mind? My mind? Yes, my mind, but it is actually God's. Krishna has created this whole universe, and I am seeing Krishna. Why don't you see Krishna? Why I am seeing only his miracle? So they want to say, I want to be with Krishna. And that Krishna is not the personal, but him. This is a conflict, apparent contradiction. Personal and impersonal are not different. Ultimately, if we make a spiritual practice, we will find that personal we start with, but when you go and lose your total identity in Krishna, then who is Krishna who will say? If you, Ramakrishna's example, you want to, wanted to measure the infinite ocean, and you, like, you think that you are like a salt doll, and as you move towards the salt doll, then what will happen? Then you will gradually lose yourself. Only God will remain. So that is the idea. Second question. When anger comes, surrender that to God. Anger comes, yeah, Ramakrishna said when anger comes, you can yeah, be, offer everything. If you can offer everything to God, nothing belongs to you, yes, you can offer. But we have to understand why I am getting angry. If everything is God's creation, the world will work by God's will. 
my Krishna's will. So why am I getting angry? Let me accept it. So it is a question of self-control and in also to see God there. As long as you can see God, we will not be angry. Then you will think, oh, your Krishna has come wearing this costume to make you angry. He's making fun with you. But if we cannot go to that level, you will be angry. And then we will say, oh, Lord, why am I am angry? You should control me. You are my boss. You know how helpless I am. I told you, please take care of me. Everybody, you don't do it. So I got mad. What can I do? Yes, we can do like that when you have a relationship with God. So we have to create that relationship more with God. Third, how to see difference between fearing the Lord and loving the Lord? A difference is that towards the beginning, spiritual life, everyone starts religion out of fear. God will punish me. If I do bad or karma, God is waiting to give punishment and reward. God gives reward, then you will go to heaven. God gives punishment, then you go to hell. Because you did bad karma. Huh? So this is the starting point of our religion. Every religion starts with fear. Hmm? But as we start loving God, as we start reacting and rela uh, start a con continued relationship with God, that fear goes away and the sweetness of God reveals. So it is a point of journey starting with fear and entering into love. So difference between fearing is not fearing, we should not fear God. Because Ramakrishna is more modern. <laughs> he says, uh, if I do something wrong, if I know he is my father, shall I be afraid of father? Father, father knows the child will do mistake. You tell your own father. So why you will be fearful? When you think he's an outside person, he will punish. Mother, even if someone does something wrong, it's not father. We don't fear mother. Mom may, mom may scold us, but that we know she loves me. I have done something wrong. So, you know, we have to transfer ourselves from this fearing God to loving God. And God is all love. We should not fear. The, all the religions, as I said, in the Vedic times also, they say, Rudra, oh Rudra, uh, don't do harm to us. Uh, protect us, oh Indra, please protect us uh, against the odds of life. So fearing God is the beginning of religion. And that transforms into automatically to God who loves. Why to fear? It is his creation. He has created me. It is his responsibility for me. I am not responsible. He is responsible. When you think like that, I belong to you, O oh Lord. You please take care. The fear goes away. So fearing, we should have to move towards loving God. Fearing God is for the people who do mistakes or Ill, willfully doing some wrong activities, they should fear, otherwise the society will break to zero, nothingness. If a person have no fear for doing bad activities and God will punish, then the society will go to ruin. You do good thing, God will reward you. You do bad thing, God will punish you. This is a necessary thing for the good of the society. But it's the beginning stage. But at the end, it should be spontaneous. Now another third question, Connie. Swami Vivekananda said that we must perform our duties and not worried about the result. Should we stop asking for God's help to help us solve our problems and only keep loving Him? Here you are, yes, this question is, when you perform your duties, we are not to worry about results. Very true, Swamiji said that's true. Should we stop asking for God's help to help us solve our problems? Yes, we shall do. We should ask God everything. 
God should be our, in our happiness, in our misery, in our failures, in our frustration. We should bring God into our life all the moment. Therefore, when we perform our duties, what will you do? We'll do our best. If I get worried only, then I cannot perform the work. When you do the work, do the work with whole heart and soul. And let the result come, say, oh Lord, whatever comes, I give it to you. But when you are working, we should be very particular that we do our work perfectly. Full attention to the work, because I'm offering it to God. So at the end, we merely worrying about the result, we spoil our job, because our certain percentage of the mind goes into worries. But joyfully work with full concentration. And at the end of the work, just offer as a bouquet of flower at the feet of the Lord. I did it for you, O oh Lord, please take it. And yes, if you love God, you can ask, O oh Lord, with your power I am doing this. Give me more power so that I can do better. This is the problem coming. Rather than you trying to solve your problem as a bhakto, you will say, oh Lord, Please guide me so that I can solve this problem. So, yes, if you love God, uh, you can say everything to God. And, but let thy will be done. Whatever you may ask, but whatever, do your best, give it to God. Do your best, give it to God. Okay? Thank you. Oh, there is another question. It is Onirvan, Tokyo. It is said that it is difficult to realize the truth as it is the most subtle thing. Is it this or there are other reasons why, which make it difficult to realize the truth? It is difficult to realize the truth, true, because we forget. But it is so simple as we did one hour of bhakti yoga. What do we learn out of this? Uh, it is not difficult. We have to be aware of it from morning, and whatever we are doing is God everywhere, to see God, to raise our consciousness from this bhakti to pure bhakti. So that can be practiced. So difficult to realize truth, it is true. What is not difficult in life? To get a grade in the school was difficult. To get a school ending examination certificate was difficult. To go to college and to get a certificate, that was difficult. Uh, some are getting PhDs, so difficult. But you cross every difficulty, so spiritual life also there will be difficulty. So but we should not stop for that. So difficult to realize the truth and it's the most subtle. That's true. But that does not say it is impossible. That's why all the Upanishads are there. That's why Swami Vivekananda, Ramakrishna, Holy Mother, Christ, Buddhas came and said, yes, I have seen, you can see. Upanishads say, Srinanta Vishwe, he's declaring loudly to the world, I have realized the truth, eh? which is beyond all darkness. You can also do, you follow it and you will get it. So there is hope for all of us. So, is it this or that are other reasons which make it difficult? No, our, we should not be fearful. It is subtle, that's true, but we can create a subtle eye by looking at the world as we read today. Tadevo avalo kayati, tadevo srinati. We can practice this. A jnani or a real bhakta devotee sees whatever he sees, he sees God only. Whatever he hears, only hears the voice of God. Huh? Whatever he tastes to the five senses, all God, 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 God. If you are a Krishna devotee, say Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. So how can I develop that in my everyday life? Just remind yourself. I am seeing, oh, these people are sitting. Who are there? Just imagine, there is Krishna, there is Krishna inside, inside, inside. Think that way. So you, you, you follow the path of the realized people. 
In the Bhagavad Gita, it is said, Jad Jad Acharati Sestra, Tatta Devo Itaro Jana. Those are great people in the society, leaders of the society. Whatever they do, other people, ordinary people follow them. So it is said, Mahajano Jena Gata Sahpantha. The, all the great people the, who have to follow their footsteps. So we have to follow their footsteps. In every action, we will have to see it is God. God is behind this costume. So, and whatever you want, we can practice. We are not talk rubbish talks. You can do that practice. Talk about God. There are in the, if you open the uh, internet, how many voices you can hear? How many videos you are there? What not? Whatever you want, you can get. But if you make a plan, I will listen only spiritual things. Okay. Think about God. Hear about God. But if you, if you open it, so much attraction is there for everything. The whole world full of knowledge and full of attractions. So make a plan that I will live this way, I will talk this way, I will see this way. So though it is subtle, but it will be, we will be able to overcome uh, this difficulty, hurdle. No? Okay? No more question. So thank you all for joining. We will be again meeting you, we in this class at 7.30. And the class will be on Shanti Gita and the song of peace. Today we learn that you are moving towards God. What is the sign? You are feeling more peace and more joy. Don't ask anybody. You are the best person to tell yourself, am I more peaceful or more restless? Is anything disturbing me more or I am less affected? So this is the sign of spiritual growth according to bhakti. Okay? Thank you all. Mother bless us. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti He. Peace, peace, peace.